Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this series of microservices, we are going to first start building a monolithic application and then we'll see how do you convert that into a microservice. Now what kind of application we are focusing now? See the important thing is we have to understand how do you create microservices, what are the technologies or things which are there to help you to build microservices, how do you connect different microservices. But then we don't want to focus much on the example per se. Of course, example can be anything. It can be simple, complex, whatever application you are building, the tools which we are going to use will be common, right? So in this series, we are going to focus on those tools and we'll keep the example very, very simple. Now, if you have missed the theory video of microservices, you will find the link in description. Uh, so watch that first and then we'll start with the practical in this video. Now, if we talk about microservices, that's something we want to go for, right? And currently we are building a monolithic application. So in this video, basically, or in this set of videos, initial set of videos, we are going to create a monolithic application and then we'll try to break it down into microservices and then we'll see the real power of microservices how it works why do we need certain tools now in this particular video we are going to start with the monolithic application where we are going to build a quiz service okay a quiz application basically now when you say quiz what it means it simply means a user is coming to the application a user will get let's say 10 questions a user will attempt those questions it will be mcqs basically and then uh, based on what you choose, you will get that amount, that much of score. That's the entire plan, right? Now to achieve that, of course, we need questions, right? So we need, let's say 10, 15 questions in the database. So we are going to use Postgres, which is our database for this particular session. And then we'll also have a Java application, a simple Spring Boot application to do that. And We'll start with the questions, okay? So we'll start with the question part and then we'll see how do you create a quiz from the questions. And when you say questions, you need to create questions, you need to update questions, you need to delete questions, you need to read questions. So basically you need to do CRUD operations with question and that's what we're going to start here. Now, to, to achieve that, we need to first create a very simple project, right? So what I will do is I will head back to Spring Initializer, which is our, that's where you will get Spring Boot project. Of course, if you have a uh, IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate version, you can directly create it from there. Or if you have STS, which is Eclipse Enterprise version, you can do it from there. But this is good. Uh, so let's say I'm creating a Maven project. And then, so what I'm, where I'm going, so if you're new to Spring, basically I'm going to start.spring.io. Uh, see, for this type of sessions, I'm expecting you to know a bit of Spring because we're not going to completely get into Spring framework. We'll, I will show you certain things and will I expect you to know Spring Boot. Okay, at least the basics of it. Okay, so project we are creating is Maven. Uh, the language we are going for Java. Of course, you can choose Kotlin Groovy here. Uh, for project, you can choose Gradle if you want. But let's say if I going, I'm going for Maven here. And then uh, the version of Spring Boot I'm going for is 3.1. Uh, you can choose whatever version you want. And then the group ID, I want it to be uh, com.telisco. And the project which I'm creating is Quiz App. And then we can put some description, uh, Telisco quiz app, and we want to create a package of JAR, uh, JAR, and then the version of Java is 17, which I have in my machine. Now, what kind of dependencies we need? First of all, we need Spring Web because that's very important. We need to create a web application. Uh, we also need to connect with database so, and which database you are working with. We are working with Postgres, so I will add that. Also, I want to have a post um, data JPA because that's how I'm going to connect with my Spring application and database. So I want data JPA. And then I don't want to actually have bulky code at least for models. So I want to use Lombok there. Just again, Lombok is something you can, if you want to use it, you can use it or you can keep it option. So that's my Lombok there. I think that's done. So we got our project here. So click on generate. It will create a project for you. You just have to unzip this. So after unzipping, you can see this is your project. I want to open this project from my IntelliJ IDEA. Of course, you can use any IDE. That doesn't matter. Uh, you can use Eclipse. You can use VS Code. That's your choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my IntelliJ IDEA, which is the ultimate version. You can also use community version that works. And I will click on open project. And I'm going to open the project which we have downloaded on open. And you can see we got our project ready here. One more thing, since we have our database in Postgres, you can use any data database. So I'm going to use Postgres. So let me open Postgres here. Oh, in fact, we have to open PG admin. 
And if I open PG admin, it will take some time. So asking for the password for my machine, it is 0000, because this is my testing machine or for recordings. So I will just open this, again asking for password. And you can see we got our PG admin ready here. And if I expand this, if I expand my databases, if I expand uh, Question DB, this is basically my database, which is I have there. Of course, we should have gone for a good name, but this works. And if I go down to schemas, so you can see we have table. And at, at this point, we only have one table, which is question, because that's how we want to work with. And in this question table, I already have data. So if I want to show you that, I will just say view all rows. Uh, you can see we have all this data here. Now this is what I want to fetch from the uh, from the web application basically. So you can see we have all these rows. In fact, we have 16 rows. So there are a few questions which are from uh, Java. There are a few questions which are from Python. Uh, of course, I can change it to small letter so that it will be in the same range, but that's fine. Uh, you can see we got how many columns we have. So if I try to see the columns here, you can see we got ID where we have the primary key. Uh, we got category because that's how you differentiate different questions uh, for the particular subject. Uh, we got difficulty level, which is for, do you want to keep this test easy or difficult? We also have options. You can see we have four options here. And then we got question title, we got right answer. So basically we have all this column. Of course, we'll go through this once again when you want to create that model. So that's what I want, right? So what I will do is I will just go back to my IntelliJ and here I want to do certain things because I want to get that data. Now, how do you get that data? So basically, let's say if I go to my browser and if I type this, if I say localhost colon 8080 slash questions slash all questions, basically I want to display everything in this page. That's my first task, okay? So we'll divide the project into a few tasks so that it will be easier to follow up and then uh, you can also practice you know, one by one. So basically, this is the first target. Let me get all the questions so that I can see on the browser. Of course, we can also use Postman uh, to send the request and stuff. We'll do that later. At this point, let me use browser. And if I go back to my IntelliJ, uh, so how do I do that? So first of all, to accept the request. At this point, you can see it is not, the site is not reaching. Okay, first of all, make sure that in your POM, you have all this configured. So you can see we have data JPA, we got web, uh, we got Postgres, we got Lombok. So make sure that you have this. Lombok is optional, as I mentioned before. So if I go back to main, now this is where I want to create my REST controller. Okay, so I will just right click here and say new class. And I want this class to be named as question uh, controller. Okay, now this is where I want to accept the request. So what I will do is I will just make this as a REST controller uh, because I want to accept the request. And also, this particular question controller will only work with question. Of course, uh, in the future videos, when we talk about quiz, how do we create a quiz? So a quiz will ask you, hey, what type of quiz you want to create? Uh, tell me the topic name, tell me difficulty level. And based on that, it will generate random 10 questions. Now for that, you'll be having a different controller. So this is question controller. You'll, you'll be also having quiz controller, right? So I want to specify the path here as well. What I can do is I can say, request mapping and in this request mapping basically we'll mention the path so whatever request is coming for question this is the controller who will handle it right now basically what i want to do is i want to accept that request of slash all questions so for that we have to create a method so i will say public uh, it should return let's say a string initially and we'll change it later and here i will say get all question that's my method name right and this method is not actually accepting anything because we are not passing any parameter. We're just saying all questions. And of course, this should match with this. So I will just copy this. And you can see the URL. It is the localhost 8080 because that's on the same machine. The port number for my server is 8080 by default. And this is the question for the question part uh, for the question controller. Once we have a quiz, we'll have a quiz there. And then uh, we have our all questions. So here, uh, I want to map it with all questions, right? So I will say get mapping. And here, the path is my all questions. So if somebody is requesting for all questions, this is the method I want to execute. And what I want to return here, very simple stuff. I will say, uh, hi, this are your questions. Just to keep it simple, let's see if this works. And I will save this. Let's run this code. Okay, how do I run this? So basically, to this is a Spring Boot app, right? And to make it work, you have to basically go to the application, right click, run. Okay, it says Lombok requires enabling. Okay, I will do that. 
Okay, now there is certain problem to this project. The thing is, we have initialized the uh, the. I mean, in our POM file, we have mentioned that we are using data GP, right? And then we have not done any configuration for that. Is that the issue here? It says fail to start. The reason is uh, we had we have not mentioned any uh, Postgres URL. Okay, that's the issue here. Uh, so what I will do is let me just configure that. So again, you can just copy paste this stuff and you can use it later. So the first thing you have to mention is the driver class name and the driver we are using here is Postgres driver. Uh, the next one we have, we have to use here is the URL and the URL is JDBC colon Postgres SQL colon slash slash localhost colon. Now the port number for Postgres is 5432. And then you have to mention database name. Database name for us is question DB, right? Uh, then you have to set the username and password for Postgres. So I will say Spring Data Source, username is Postgres and password as well. So we'll set the password as 0000, that's for my machine. And then you have to basically also enable DDL Auto. So DDL Auto, if you want to create the table, if you don't have it, so I will say update. Uh, I do have a table, but let's say if you want to set this, and also I want to, so let me type it spring.jpa.properties.hibernate. Now this is where you have to set the dialect, right? So it is, uh, why it's not coming automatically. So it's org.hibernate. You don't have to buy hard this. Basically I also have nodes for it. So dialect dot Postgres SQL dialect. Okay. So once we have assigned these properties, I think it should work now. Again, we are not using them, but then since we have added data, data JPA, so it's become compulsory to add this. So I will go back to my application and I will run this. Now you can see this time, no problem. The server is running on 8080 and let's go back to our browser refresh. And you can see we got the output. It says, hi, uh, these are my questions. Of course, we have not any sent any questions, but let's say this is the output, but I want to return the real questions, right? How will I do that? So let's try to achieve that in the next video. So in this video, basically we created the project structure uh, for the monolithic application. In next video, we'll try to uh, solve this and also we'll see how do you do the remaining CRUD operations in the question controller. So I hope you will be enjoying this microservices series. And uh, if you're excited, let me know in the comment section and hit that like button. Bye-bye.